Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I'm sharing with you one of our lessons from our mineralogy main lesson block. We're using a Waldorf approach and this is the main lesson book that I'm using for reference but I do have other resources and you can find all of the resources that I'm using for this unit on the blog post that accompanies this video and you can find that link down in the description box below. I'm sharing with you some of the minerals and rocks that we are using for this main lesson. I also have some gemstones and some other rock samples that we're referring to as we are doing this lesson. So this lesson is going to be a little bit more challenging than I expected and I am working alongside my 13 year old daughter and I'm going to be doing the work in our main lesson book and she's going to be doing her work alongside with me in her main lesson book and I'm doing this rather than working on the chalkboard. I have my Lyra color pencils and I'm using a main lesson book that is 9 inches by 12 inches. The pages are blank, there are no lines on these pages and these notebooks, these main lesson books are generally used for students maybe third and fourth grade but we are in middle school and we're still using these. They're still my favorite main lesson books to use, although you can find other ones that have line pages and blank pages. These ones do have an onion skin between each of the pages so that your artwork and your writing don't smudge on one another. So I'm going to do this lesson a little bit differently. So we've already done the the actual delivery of the lesson. This is now the work that accompanies the lesson. And I'm going to be doing this one a little bit differently than the previous lesson where we had all of the writing on one side of the page and then we had our illustration on the opposing side of the page. This time we're going to focus on just one page. We've written one paragraph and my daughter has copied this paragraph so for her this is copy work. And we wrote about granite, and now we're going to draw granite. And this took me a really long time, and I don't expect hers to look like mine. In fact, I don't know that mine looks that accurate in the end. I find trying to draw somewhat photorealistic items or something that's scientific and needs to be accurate in that respect really, really challenging for me. And I am doing the best that I can with the color pencils and the skill set that I have. And in the end, it looks okay, but it's uh, more challenging than some of the more artistic and flexible illustrations that we've done in the past. So I am adding these different parts to the this particular piece of granite. Granite comes in many different colors and compositions. And we're doing one, I'm referring to a sample actually but I'm doing one that's actually going to work really well with the second part of the illustration for this main lesson because we are talking about granite and we began these lessons with looking at the two archetypal stones or rocks rather and to be honest that information could be just for the teacher or it could be something that you're sharing with the student the idea of like archetypal rocks or, and, and using that terminology that's primarily for the teacher but for the the student to see that the the rock that we're discussing granite comes from fire and limestone comes from water in the sense that that is the way that they are created you're seeing two really opposing natural forces creating these two different kinds of rocks then once we we did our lesson on granite and it included other aspects too. We talked about the different layers of the planet and we talked about volcanoes a little bit. So it wasn't in isolation to some of the other topics that we discussed briefly and will discuss more. But then we were looking at, this is a mineralogy block, so we're looking at the minerals, but we're, we're starting out with the whole, which is the whole rock, which is granite, before we look at the components or the pieces, and now we're looking at the minerals that make up granite. So on the left side, I have quartz. In the middle, I have mica. And on the right side, I have feldspar. So now, now that I've given each one a pencil drawing, I'm coming back in with the, with the color pencils. And I drew feldspar the best I could, but then I realized once I looked at some other, some other images, I noticed that it should have been a little bit more squared off around the edges rather than broken off like in more of a ragged 
way. So I go back in and I fix that. And in the meantime, I'm working on the mica, trying to get it that somewhat metallic-y kind of look. And then for the quartz, I thought about doing rose quartz, but I just decided to add a little bit of gray so that it's the clear quartz. But when we write our description of each of these minerals, then I do include the other types of quartz because the impurities that are mixed in with the formation of this crystal cause it to have different colors and each of those different colored quartzes have a name as well. So I've tried to come back in and sort of fix the feldspar a little bit to make it look a little bit more like the the images that I'm seeing because the sample that I have uh, looked it's a, it's a, it was a little bit difficult to to draw from a three-dimensional image versus drawing from a two-dimensional image. So now I'm going to write some notes or just a paragraph about feldspar and I'm doing it on the far right. I'm going to go ahead and write a little bit about the mineral composition because I want to include the elements that make up these different minerals because that's going to help tie into the a unit that will follow in chemistry and I also want to, or I actually wanted to, add the structure so that we could see the way these different elements come together. And in, instead of doing an illustration of those, that structure, we are actually making a three-dimensional model of that so we can get a better idea of what a tetrahedron looks like in a three-dimensional space rather than trying to draw it. So I've written my paragraph on mica, and I'm just going to finish up with a little paragraph on quartz, making sure to mention all of the different colored quartz and just how common these particular minerals are and how much they make up so much of the rock, the rocks that we have on the surface of the planet. I hope that you enjoyed this look at our lesson. I hope that you'll check out the blog post that accompanies this video. It has all of the materials that we're using and the links to those materials as well as an extensive playlist of videos that we have done over the years. This is my fourth and final time doing this blog. And don't forget that if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.